So, um, a lot of us probably subscribe to uh, what is the Ruby Weekly. Um, and this has probably been a couple months ago. Uh, they had a, this thing called uh, Kata 1.61 update, right? Um, that just got me interested. So I went and clicked on it, and uh, this, you know, this is what it was. I had never heard of this popular gym that he was talking about and these code katas, but what intrigued me about it is when I first got into Ruby um, a couple years ago, uh, the thing that made me learn the fastest and learn the most was watching other people code. Right? I come from a C sharp Windows environment world, so all of the shortcuts and uh, you know the dude who I watched uh, use Sublime Text, so I use Sublime Text now. Um, I know the Emacs and Vim people. You should watch the film person, but whatever. Um, but uh, I just learned a ton from that. So, um, and it's one of the things that I would love for a super experienced developer um, to do another one of these code products so that I can selfishly learn from them too. But given that uh, I want to see other people do it, I figured I'd um, I'd uh, do the first one. And that since I've been here, I don't know if anybody else has done one since NBRB has been in existence. But um, so yeah, so this gym is pretty cool. Um, if you've never heard of it or uh, dealt with it before, um, basically what it does is it gives you a DSL to write a kata. Um, so what we'll see here in a second is it'll run us through you know however many stanzas. So a kata is basically just um, practice coding, right? So it'll give you a problem, a major problem that you're trying to solve. The one we're going to try to solve today is Pig Latin. Um, we're going to write a Pig Latin translator. Um, and then <clears throat> it'll give you a stanza. So the first stanza will be, uh, this is what the output should be. The second stanza will be a little more complicated, so on and so forth, right? Um, and actually, we'll go through as many stanzas as we need to until Joel shows up. So. Um, we'll, we'll see. Um, but this uh, this gem, basically what it does, it, it kind of lays the framework for being able to do that. I, I thought it was really cool. I'll let's see if I can walk you guys through it. I set a lot of this stuff up beforehand, so we'll look at some of the commands. We won't necessarily run through. So um, let me go to. So that readme is super simple. And you go over to this wiki, um, <clears throat> installing it. They're just saying, hey, run, bundle, create a RVM gem set. Um, it's pretty standard stuff, stuff that I've already done on my machine, so we'll skip through that. Um, but then they want you to clone this repo called Code Cutters. Uh, and basically, what that is, <clears throat> if we look in here, this is the DSL for the Kata gem. So basically, each one of these are stanzas that we're about to go through one at a time. It's really cool how it kind of lays it out for you, which we'll see here in a second, but um, this is the code behind it. So, get it started. Um, so they want you to set up the code katas, and um, they tell you how to get started there. Uh, really what we're gonna run through today is, uh, well, have, no, this is the, getting it set up. So what it does is, You'll say, hey, I want to run the calculator code kata. And what it'll do is it'll set it up on your machine, okay, create a git repo for it. It'll push it up to get up for you. Um, and then when you are going to practice one, when you're running through it, it'll do a commit after every stanza is complete um, so that you can just see your progression through this thing. So, uh, again, stuff that we're kind of skipping through because we want to get straight to the code. So practice one, right? Dude, let's do our first practice one. So that command is pretty straightforward, kata take, um, and then you have the code kata repo pulled down already. So we will come right over here, and I know I have to make this bigger. Um, so earlier today, uh, I created the pig Latin um, kata, where I did the kata setup thing that I was showing you a second ago. Um, and I did it earlier today so that we can go out here and I will send this out. Well, actually, um, 
first thing I wanted to do was, if uh, you want to play along, uh, write a couple specs for me, um, those of you who are our spec wizards. Um, at the end of every kata, I'm going to write the code, write the specs myself up here live coding for everybody, and then uh, after we talk about that for a few minutes, then I'm going to see whoever wants to, um, whoever's pushed to the branch that I'm working off of, we're going to pull their specs in and make sure that the code adheres to their specs as well. So should be interesting. Um, so please, please, I want to love uh, participation in here with this. Um, this is the NDRB FlowDoc area. Um, so if you haven't already, sign up for FlowDoc, get in here, and we'll, I'll just add your name in as a collaborator over here. If you want to know how to get in there, NDRB Over here is our flow. So just click join our flow, and it should take you through all the steps to be set up on FlowDoc. So, um, Cool, so let me just go ahead and get started. Um, another thing that this thing uses is this thing called auto tests, which those of you who um, use like guard is what we use. Um, just something that sits there and runs your specs every time something is up there. It's basically just a file watcher. Um, yeah, every time you save, it'll just run the specs, right? See so people joining, it's awesome. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just run kata take. I have my code katas, and we're going to do pig Latin. And all this is going to do is tell me exactly what we should be doing with this first stanza. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy uh, what we're supposed to be doing. I'm going to do a full test-driven development. I guess I should probably tell you about this. So when you do kata setup, when you set this kata up, it gives you everything that you see here. So I haven't touched this yet. Um, so it gives you a lib directory with piglet in it, so that class is already there. Uh, there's your auto test stuff that I already has set up. I just had to run bundle and set everything up for me. Um, it bootstrapped it all together for me, so I didn't have to do any of that stuff. Um, and then it gave me one spec with one spec in here, so initialize. So just so that we can see that this works, I'm going to save this. And if everything is working right, oh, I have to turn on auto test. So now I'll come over here, and if you look at my browser over in the top right hand corner, when that one goes away, I'll save, it'll run, and it'll tell us if we're fast or fail, right? So beautiful way to get up and running super quick. Um, like I said, I was going to paste this stuff in here. Um, and we're going to, uh, first thing we're going to do, every one of these, I'm going to set these up in this, uh, in a describe block. So describe a Latin. Everything we're doing here is setting up the string, um, called, and we're going to expect it to be called phrase. So phrase, and if you've never seen our spec before. Um, uh, actually, here, I'll just display. Welcome, Miles and Joel. We just started this one, so. Right on so, they gave us a lot of uh, what we're supposed to be doing already. So, what I'm doing is going ahead and set each of these up as a potential spec that. I'm going to go ahead and write. Uh, get all this. Make sure that my double quotes and single quotes are situated. So, <clears throat> if you've never seen R spec before, if you just write a hit block without a do or a end or anything, what it'll do is it'll say that it's pending. That's why you see four or five pending over there. So, let's take a look at this first one. Uh, should um, the string is a list of words separated by spaces from the whole world. So I'm going to assume that it says it should accept that. <clears throat> so we're going to say pig, uh, what do we call it? Translator equals pig Latin. That's new. It's got accepts from the world. 
And uh, well, for this first one, they're just saying that they we want to make sure this can happen. So we're just going to say, expect this not to raise an error. You might be like, okay, well, if that one doesn't raise an error in the first one, I'll be right about that. So one of five uh, failed. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one up here just because we're going to do it again right here. We'll go over here to my big Latin class. Def initialize uh, the phrase. And, um, save that. That gets three or four pending, so the spec that I just wrote <clears throat> passed. Right? <clears throat> let's go back over here. Let's go to the second one. The string should be accessed by a method named a phrase. All right. Do you end? Uh, the uh, translator translator equals to Latin Latin something uh, expect translator dot phrase to equal something. So again, those of you who have never written R spec before, if you've written a search statement, um, this is kind of like a search statement, it's just weirdly defined. So you're saying that this, the phrase part, is your expected or your actual. You know, if you go with the actual expected, and this is your expected, right? And so it's very similar to you know the mini test loaders of the world and the models out there. Um, you know, it's very similar in that in the, they're trying to be a lot more uh, what's the word, descriptive or uh, where it reads easier. So we'll run this one, take a look. One of four failed because it has no idea what phrase is. Um, we didn't do anything with phrase, so I'm going to go ahead and create another accessor. Spell it right. We'll call this phrase. Um, Self dot phrase equals the, the phrase. So yeah, farce. Yeah. Yeah. The farce. Yeah. Where is that? The farce. Uh, the, uh, I think it's the same. Yeah. Maybe a colon factor out of it. Yeah, it's live code. You know what I'm saying? It happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we got many eyes. Yeah. That's an army, army of hair program. You got many eyes? Uh, so we'll go out here, one is failing, uninitialized constant, pig Latin, because the L in pig Latin is supposed to be capitalized, but they stupidly made it not, so I keep making it uh, here. Alright, so that test passed now. Uh, the string should be reset at any time without initializing. So, basically, clean. Set this to translator dot phrase equals something else. You know, this is supposed to say something else. I'm assuming that's what that. When I when I first read that, one, I didn't really know what that meant. I'm assuming that's what that means. Just great word, reset phrase. Um, actually, if I was going this right, I should have been like this reader. Um, it's expressive. Thank you, Mom. Uh, <laughs> It should have been reader at first, which would have made the other ones fail, so on and so forth. So we skipped over that. I went straight to accessor, which is probably bad for me. But whatever. Um, so now we can just, this one doesn't really make sense. We've already tested this up above. So three examples passed. So now I am effectively done with this part of the, the kata. So if I just say yes right there, enter, um, I'm going to go over here, push. So I'm on branch NDRB, um, and I'll give uh, a couple of you guys access here in a second when I go over here and see who's asked for. Um, and what just happened there, if we go out to GitHub, Branch, 
So what just happened is create a Latin class that is initialized with a string that they did that commit for me. All right, they didn't push. I had to do a push. They did that commit for me as soon as I said I was done with that part of the stanza. Uh, and when we get completely done with this, it gives you a report of how long it took you to do each stanza. You know, I thought it was really cool. Um, but that's what that yes no thing is about that we just that we just saw over here. All right. So now that I'm pushed out there, uh, did anybody ask for you want to copy the URL of the quote doc, maybe? I guess I did give you guys some writing dispatch. So I'll go on to the second stanza, um, and then uh, we'll go from there. So I don't have to deal with any uh, pull requests or anything like that. We'll, we'll do a big pull request. I created the NDRB branch because we're going to do a big pull request hopefully here in a minute. And have the code review hopefully. So uh, that's why we're doing most work in the NDRB branch. So, um, all right, so let's move on to the second kata or the second stanza. And so, same thing I did last time. Copy this, uh, paste this bad boy down here. Then we'll do some string magic to get it to say it's and all the rest of that. Um, so we're going to get it to translate the method from, uh, we need a translate method that's going to go from English to Big Latin, <coughs> called this, that, and it should get this thing. And these up here. This is too big, I can tell. Alright, so let's implement this first one. It should, so the method should return a string. So, lazy and prep. So, implementation from up here. Uh, so, they want. <laughs> Translate for late methods. Actually, I'm doing it in the wrong place. Translate. And they say this should just be a string, so. Um, what should, should I do with like Isa? So, Isa uh, equal to string. Will that work? You can, you can say, you can say it's a string to be true, right? Uh, yes. Or expect to be a string. So you should just be able to, so if you delete the is a mm -hmm. section and the expect, mm -hmm. move it to after the two, so the whole thing, <laughs> right? And then so it's to be a string. And so... Ah. The, that is a R spec two. two. Yeah. Definitely did this. Um, three should. Cool. It figures out that B is is, and then yeah. question marks it. And it. All right. So we have one of six failing. Let's get this thing to pass. Uh, boy, boy. Def translate. We'll just return whatever because it's all we're supposed to return right now. All right, so that one's passing now. Cool. Um, the empty string should return a nil. I'm assuming what they mean by that uh, is if we pass in the empty string in the initialize, that can this be like just be nil? Yep. Okay, cool. So that's not going to work. So here we got to get that pass. So um, phrase that meal or empty. Then return a meal. Else return some string. All right, that was passing. And should yeah, that's saying the same thing as the one above. So we'll just delete that. 
So we're done with that stanza. So we'll go say yes. Move over here. Push. Push that left way up. So it's um, pressing yes rather than yes again. Uh, it doesn't. All yes does, from what I understand, is it just commits it, and at the end it'll do that time study thing, so just keeping track of the ticks in between. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's all yes does that, that I can think of or that I know of. Um, cool. So, what do we think? Do we want to, has anybody written any specs that I want me to pull in, or do we want to go into the next stanza? Um, maybe do one or two more stances before we want to uh, try to get these things going. Yeah, let's move on. This next one looks interesting. All right, cool. So, <laughs> doing more than returning the deal. That's awesome. Um, so, now we're going to translate. Translate words that start with vowels. So each of these details have an example. One, two, do this thing. Uh, examples at the end of it. I'd use the example does the ex oh. expect assertion. Was that? I would use the examples as the expect assertions. Yeah. Cool. So let's set some of those up. Being being lazy. Should append an A to the word if it ends in the consonant. Example ask translates to ask A. Right. So Ask to translate to ask. Okay, let's go ahead and do the rest of this. So that we don't keep going back. Apple should translate to Apple A. Apple A. And the final one is any should translate to any name. Yeah, I did not, yeah, I did not know big lab. I thought this was all about language thing. Yeah, yeah. How did you know this big lab? should have done that. I uh, should have said that. Uh, all right, so. Um, so if it ends in the constant, we're going to append a y to it. So, um, so if it's empty, uh, then we're going to go ahead and return nil, else, uh, else, we're going to do some stuff. Um, so we'll say, Phrase. Uh, it's a quick way to get to the last letter. Um, I usually do some you know, weird. Isn't it like negative? Charge dot last. Oh, yeah. Negative yeah. Yeah. yeah, charge dot last. Charge dot last, that works. Isn't there an ends with? Ends with question? Yeah. With an end with? But then you have to remember it next to the consonants, right? Mm. That's true. Um, or the second consonants. Yeah. That's the whole letter. Ends with, I think it's a question. Yeah. So, ends with, that must be the So, what I just did here, again, um, a lot of stuff I didn't know when I first started out. This started up an IRB console. IRB console, for um, those of you who are new, is um, just a Ruby console. So I can do like one plus one and it'll do code things for me. Right? So it's a full Ruby console where I can test out some of the things that we're about to do uh, without having to run through a full test. I right? want to just quickly get to something. So like in here, if I wanted to say, uh, 
uh, David, um, uh, Charge, uh, Last, Returns I, so I think we're solid with that. Um, you also, it looks like there is an end with. Yeah. Um, end with. So you could, like, if you do db.methods.sort, for example, you can just show off uh, what you can do in the end, and it's question mark. Uh, so, so one nice, I used to do this, um, if you if you install pry, um, it's pretty much the same thing as uh, IRB, except you can say ls and object, and it'll do this in a much nicer format. Ooh. Ooh. I've used pry, but I've never heard of the ls and object. Yeah. It's a CD and object. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Interesting. And I also like to do like a dot methods minus object dot methods, and you'll get just ones that are defined on that thing, so you've not inherited. Do a shortcut and say one dot methods. <laughs> You're subtracting from the array. What? Uh, Davy dot methods minus object dot methods. Oh, capital I got you. O object. I got you. Alright, no, that's cool. Cool, so we need constants. Um, I'm not going to write out all the constants. I uh, had an argument with somebody earlier today whether or not we should put like um, constants in how those should be defined. Let me go ahead and find them here. So instead of doing constants, I'm going to do vowels. Do some negative logic here. Um, this should, it's going to freak people out. I'm not going to do the whole string shortcut. So, got our vowels up there. Was that? Sometimes one. Yeah. But, nah, 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 nah. I think there is a spec for that later where we do something with Ys. Um, so, here I'm just going to say. I mean, it's just, it can't be one of those if it's not one of those, so, um, so we'll say vowels, uh, that include. So, like, if not this, did you ask for that too? Yeah. I want to do some weird logic so that the next part is a little interesting, so we're going we're gonna to keep that esoteric method right there. Um, then we want to include a y thing, so then we're going to return, and I know the people are like, oh my god, you return right there. You're going to do it, just bear with me, <laughs> bear with me. Praise a y. I just died. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Done. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, where are we? So, the one spec that we're trying to get to pass, passed. So, fantastic. Let's move on to the next one. Um, and I'm not trying to teach bad habits. That's not what the purpose of this, but. I promise it'll make sense here in by doing something that I probably wouldn't do normally. Um, and hopefully, at the end of this, maybe we can talk about some of the things that I absolutely wouldn't have done, but uh, it'll make sense, I promise. Um, so, if the word ends in a vowel, then you put in yay at the end of the part. Let's do that. Uh, with just an else, because we already got that there in relation. Yay. So we have one filling. Beautiful. Got one kind of um, So if it ends with a Y, they want to put an A. All right. Uh, since that's the first one, we'll uh, I'll skip this that way. If this equals Y, then we're gonna do. Okay. We got them all passing, so we're going to be happy about getting them passing. We're do that. We're going to do a push. Ship. 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 
Be <laughs> once. <laughs> So we can go on to the next stanza, or we can pull in some uh, from fucking ship it. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't give you control of browsing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's dangerous. There we go. Is that the ship squirrel? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So, really, do, so we can do two things here. We can go into the next stanza, which is actually the last one I probably would hit uh, in this, or we can start refactoring or. Um, let's do another. Do another? Do another. Do another. All right, let's do another. Let's, do let's do make it really one. messy before. <laughs> a, little, a little bit messier before we, before we have anybody take a look at this. All right, so we'll do the same thing. Grab a couple specs, or a couple things that I'm going to turn into specs. Requirements. <laughs> there you go. Requirements. Uh, I'm going to be super lazy. Copy all this down here. This is just replacing stuff. What's that? Turn over the word that starts with a single constant. All right, cool. It should. Copy that. I don't know what I want to do. I'm not doing a very good job of doing it. Uh, should I put this over there? Turn on the other Ah, do what I want. Just do uh, all right. to do and should be ah, should be removing constants from the front of the word. I think we have some. Got some examples down here, so I want me to turn hello into hello yay, add the consonant to the end of the word. So I know that these are the two examples that they want us to get to, so let's just create one more and see if we can't get to those. That's where they really want me to go. So I'll make these two. Um, copy that out because I don't want to see that. Check two failures. All right. So should remove the constant from the front of the word and just stick A at the end of it. If the word starts with a single consonant, um, neither one of these specs have two consonants next to each other, so I'm not going to check that. Um, so if it starts with, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do else if that first, um, I'll do it the other way now, so we'll just say it's excluded. Um, so I'm Then they want us to take that first letter, put it at the end, and then add the A to the end of it. So we're just going to do this in one little string. So phrase. They want us to take everything except for the first letter. We're going to do this in a real healthy way. So we're just going to 
Hopefully, the letter, the word is never more than that long. Um, so what the story Range is, error. Range <laughs> error. Uh, and we're going to stick that letter here. And then we're going to just put A at the end of it. Let's see if that gets it. No, that's broken many, many more things. Needs a return. Oh, that's it. That's it. And a semicolon, right? Uh, <laughs> um, all right, let's see where we're going other than some of these places. Uh, I'm fine with the exclude, so that, maybe that's not for this version of Ruby or Works. Yeah. Oh, is that Rails thing? Rails or something? Oh, uh, it's not Ruby. Because include in the negative is so much better. <laughs> In passing, I did not expect that to um, <laughs> So yeah, so... <laughs> so actually, we're done with this stanza. And I'm, I mean, being a little... And really what I wanted to show off here was the gym, which I think is awesome for getting better so you don't make some of the mistakes I'm making here. Um, and also, I ran through the calculator one, and... It was just fun to be able to just have somebody say, okay, this is what I wanted to do. And then you're questioning the specs throughout. And I, when I did it for real with the calculator, I wrote additional specs that I'm like, okay, well, you get this stuff. And then in later stanzas, they actually bring some of that stuff up. So um, just really highly recommend just from a getting better standpoint uh, to test out, test out the gem as a whole. So make sure that I'm all pushed up. Translate a word with a single consonant. Cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I would love doing this, so I would, I would do all of these, but I don't think uh, now is the time to do them all, probably. But, uh, so, yeah, are there any questions about the kata itself or, or the gym itself or the concept of the kata? Um, any questions about any of that stuff? Yeah, well, it looks like when you start doing Kakata, like it pushes and can repo your own account. Is, mm -hmm. there a great, is there anything out there to like find other people's solutions to Katas or compare with that community around this? Um, we talked about something that did like a. Was that. Was it extra system? Yeah, it's what it reminds me. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely, it, it definitely has that same feel to it. Um, this is, I mean, the katas are, like, there's a lot of awesome videos of people doing katas and, and, you know, doing it actually not trying to be sarcastic about some of the things where they're going through. And, I mean, I actually learned a few things here today. I mean, I didn't know some of these RSpec things. And, but um, there, there's actually a lot of really cool, I think they talk about one of them the original post, a place where you can go to get a bunch of condos. I can't remember exactly where it is. Uh, I'll find it and uh, send it to you guys or put it out on a website or something like that. But, um, but yeah, if you just I mean, Google Ruby code, condos, there are a ton out there. Go kind of out. Um, uh, but yeah, he has a, a ton of them. I can't remember this guy's name, but he has a ton of them that um, you just go through just to just to kind of test your skills personally. Um, I think it would be really cool if if they did have the repo thing, if, like exorcism, you know, said, "Hey, do these katas and put your code out there," but nothing that. It's such a similar process. You think exorcism like pull in some Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, if there's no other questions or uh, concerns or issues or um, you know, what I would love to do is pass the book over to my man Joel over there. And uh, then maybe afterwards I, I can stick around for you know, a couple of people uh, really new to movie. I can't stick around and clean this up the way I would clean it up, but I think we might get a little bit of that here in a second. So. Cool. Thank All you. Right.
people 